Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a GPT Win 3 handheld gaming PC prototype. Uh, you can find more detailed notes about general performance and an overview in a previous video, but in this one, I wanted to take a look at a couple of new features. Uh, just a quick refresher, this has a 5.5 inch 720p display, an Intel Tiger Lake processor with Iris XE graphics, and of course, built-in game controllers that allow you to use it as a gaming PC. It also has what is quite honestly one of the worst little uh, keyboards of any handheld device that I've used because it's a capacitive touch keyboard. There is no physical response other than a little bit of vibration when you're typing, and that can lead to uh, mistypes. Uh, the alignment is also a little bit weird. The shift key doesn't work great. I find that text input can be a little bit tedious. It does have a touch screen for navigation when you're doing things besides gaming, but there's also now a mouse mode, and this is a feature that... Um, was delivered as a firmware update to me, but is also gonna be available to anybody who purchases this through crowdfunding or retail. And it allows you to use the left and right buttons as left and right click and move around using the game controller. And that makes uh, certain sorts of precise input just a little bit easier. For instance, sometimes it can be hard to register a double click. It worked at that time, but sometimes you're not sure if it works. But I can click twice the way I would with a mouse, and it tends to work just fine. It comes in handy for launching applications as well, or minimizing apps, because again, sort of hitting those precise points with your finger can be a little bit tricky, but it's a little bit easier when you can move the cursor around. Now, the other new thing I wanted to show you is the dock, which is an optional accessory. It sells for about $50 during crowdfunding. I'm not sure what the full retail price is gonna be. But while we've got a Thunderbolt 3 port here on the bottom, and a USB-A port on the top, that's about it, other than the headset jack, this dock gives you the ability to connect extra accessories because it has uh, power, HDMI, three USB Type-A, and Ethernet. Now, it doesn't support external graphics docks because it hops out at 10 Gbps instead of the uh, full 40 that you'd get from uh, Thunderbolt, but for a relatively inexpensive, inexpensive add-on, I think it makes this a much more usable device in some ways because now, in addition to using it for handheld gaming tasks, you can really use it as kind of like a desktop computer. You can plug in a mouse, a keyboard, an external display, and it's got enough horsepower to really do some of those things just, just fine. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that in this video. So first, let's go ahead and plug in a couple of items. Uh, this is a power cord, keyboard and touchpad dongle, 1080p external display, although I think right now I've just got it set to 720p, and a game controller. I'm going to save the Ethernet and show you that in a minute, because first I want to show you just what a difference having a wired connection can make. So I've just got a little keyboard here, and let's go ahead and just do a quick file transfer from a network shared drive. So I'm going to grab a file that's about a gigabyte in size that's on shared network drive. Copy, paste, and this is over a Wi-Fi connection. And we're hitting around 60 MB per second, which is not bad. Uh, and we're in the same room as the router, and that's a pretty decent, respectable speed. But if I go ahead and plug in Ethernet, now that that's connected, let's go ahead and try and paste the same file. Now... We're sort of getting the same speeds. Maybe let's give it a second to make sure that the ethernet is detected. And let's turn off Wi-Fi. There we go, 115 or 113 MB per second. So uh, speeds that are almost twice as fast, and uh, I think that is just a quick demonstration of why it is nice to be able to have a wired connection from time to time. It's often more reliable and uh, should be a lot faster for data transfers. Now, the other thing, of course, you can do with this docking station, besides just plugging in more things, is uh, you can plug in an external display. So I'm going to go ahead and Turn on the screen behind us here. 
zoom out and pan up. And uh, so now you can see we're accessing everything on the external displays. So this time um, I've got the screen actually set to 720p. So it's basically exactly the same as what we've got on the local and we've got it mirrored, but you can of course adjust your display settings. So if I wanted to, I can come in here and say, instead of duplicating the displays, I could extend the display. And on the larger screen, you can see it is set to 1080p. Well, actually, can you see that? Let's see. Now you should be able to see it a little bit easier. So it's set to 1080p. Um, so I can extend the desktop. I can use a, two different applications. I'm going to go back to mirroring them, though, just so you can see what it looks like. if I wanted to, for example, play some PC games. So let's go ahead and uh, launch one. I'm gonna do Darksiders 2. And I've got here plugged in a sort of Xbox style controller because unfortunately this sort of setup makes it such that uh, playing while it's docked isn't really gonna be a great option. Um, so I've got this controller instead. So while one of the main advantages of this device is that it has the built-in controllers that you can play on the go, when you're docked, you can use it this way. Now, of course, you could also um, use it as a general purpose desktop computer because it does have enough uh, CPU horsepower, I think, to handle that. So you could use it in addition to gaming, you could use it for uh, office, productivity, web browsing, all sorts of things. But this is what it looks like if you're gaming on a larger screen. And so at that point, instead of just being a handheld gaming machine, it really can become a desktop style gaming system. Now I'm gonna exit this and pick it up and show you that if we detach it, you can also use it as a handheld system, again, playing the same game, but using the built-in controllers instead. So I zoom. And I did learn the hard way that you do have to disconnect it, otherwise it's not gonna recognize that you switched controllers. The journey so far, in the beginning, death sought the crow father. So, same game, this time handheld. Seek out 
And again, connect it back to the docking station. And just like that, we've got access to the desktop. Um, and I guess, you know, really one of the main reasons that you might want to do this is, as I've continually mentioned, text input is just a pain on the device itself. And that makes it something that you're not necessarily going to use a lot for uh, mobile text input. But if you connect an external keyboard, then typing becomes easy, assuming you're paying attention. Um, so I think for that sort of multitasking, for uh, you know, web browsing, for watching videos, um, you know, these are all things that you can do on the smaller device or on the smaller screen, but it just becomes a little bit more enjoyable, I think, when you're using it docked if you wanted to use it as a general purpose computer that then you can pick up and go and take for gaming. So that is a quick look at uh, two of the features that I wasn't able to showcase in my earlier video, the docking station and the mouse mode input. And I think they both make this a slightly more compelling uh, purchase. I don't necessarily know that everybody looking for a handheld gaming PC is going to want that dock, but for an extra $50, I do think it makes a difference. It would be nice if there was an option to get a dock that also supported Thunderbolt capabilities in case you wanted to use NVIDIA or AMD discrete graphics, but just for the ability to add Ethernet and HDMI and a couple of extra USB ports, I think it does make a difference. Uh, this, by the way, is the box that it uh, that the dock came in. I assume this is pretty similar to what you'll get for the retail box. Uh, so you can see that it sort of highlights some of the functionality. And here we've got USB 3.1 type A. Uh, Gen 2 supports 10 Gbps data transmission, uh, backward compatible with USB 2.0. Uh, HDMI 2.0A supports 4K displays at 60 hertz. Uh, again, I'm using a 1080p display, so um, can't demonstrate all of that. Gigabit Ethernet and a 65 watt USB PD uh, power charging. Uh, and it says supports Windows, but I can't imagine why it wouldn't support other operating systems as well, even though uh, so far this device is not super Linux friendly, but maybe in the future that'll change. So um, you can find more details at lilliputing.com or check out the Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign for a uh, chance to purchase this device for $7.99 and up or uh, 849 and up if you wanted that docking station as well. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a look at the GPD Win 3 handheld gaming PC prototype and docking station.